Hi, good morning. Welcome to this. This is the um, the 23rd um, Firestarter Forum. So I guess that means we've been doing them for nearly two years. Uh, you wouldn't know. We all still look young and fresh, I'm sure. Um, so here we are, beginning of 2022. Um, I don't know about you, but um, it feels like uh, we've been back in the thick of it um, forever. Christmas seems like just a, a dim and distant memory. Um, but uh, nonetheless, today we're going to we're going to start we're going to start as we mean to go on. So we're going to have lots of conversations about what we need to do to keep our energy up and all, all those things we talked about doing in in the new year, all our New Year's resolutions. How do we how do we really push forwards with those and make them happen? Um, so um, plan for the next seventy five minutes. Um, quick intro. Uh, we'll start with a, just a, a bit of a taking the temperature of everybody. A couple of polls. Um, uh, Matt Wheeler is going to um, join us and, and talk about some some tips from previous um, forum uh, attendees, and then I'll I'll share some um, some of my thoughts, um, which I actually first shared um, in, in in a similar format uh, way back in September 2020. So it's interesting to look at them with fresh eyes. Um, in the breakouts today. Um, we're going to give you a chance to, to talk about your views on, on 2022. We've got a couple of um, thoughts on that. Um, and then after that, we'll, we'll basically move into a, a, a more open forum with uh, breakout feedback, general discussion, um, and a bit of a bit of fun at the end. Um, so that's the plan. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking. Um, uh, most people have been to um, these before, um, but we always do a, a just a quick reminder of um of how they work so you will have been brought on on video and mute um obviously in the breakouts they'll be very dull if you can't see and hear each other so uh, that's on you to get that fixed best view is actually the speaker view um because then you get the full view of the slides and the show um breakout sessions you don't need to do anything uh when you if you do talk in the open forum or in the open breakout similarly you uh need to uh make sure you're unmuted we will try and do that um and then just generally as we go along, and especially uh, when we tell you what we want to do today, um, please do put any comments you want in the chat. Um, and uh, we will start now um, with um, a couple of polls. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, the, on the, yes. Okay, sorry, yes. So we've got um, the first poll coming on the screen now, which is just a reflect um, back on 2021. Um, so uh, the question is, on balance, how happy were you with how your business performed in 2021? Um, and it's pretty obvious the, the answer is very happy. Um, uh, we exceeded expectations, pretty happy, about on target, a bit disappointed and uh, very disappointed. It was a tough year. Um, so if we just keep on voting through, uh, I think we've got three or four people left to vote. Um, and in a second, we shall share the results. Um, and perfect. So um, actually, um, I think that's how I would describe it for fast over as well. Actually, pretty happy. We were about on target with what we wanted to do. Um, so uh, I think fundamentally, that's 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 a pretty good consensus across people. Um, people either very happy or pretty happy. So uh, all things being equal. Um, well, well done us, I guess. So uh, let's move forward now. And uh, I'm sure you can guess what this question is going to be. Poll number two um, is if we look at poll number two, that is looking forward to 2022, the year we're in now. Do you think 2022 will be um, significantly better than last year, a bit better than last year, about the same as last year? worse than last year so again if we just uh if everybody just votes on this cool cool neck and neck at the moment okay so again if we if we have a look at these results um what you will see is that uh, most people remain optimistic. 41% uh, of people are saying they think it will be significantly uh, better than last year. Um, just under 50% saying a bit better than last year. So I guess if you, uh, if you, if you add those two numbers together, that's nearly 90% of people who are thinking, definitely expecting this year to be an improvement on last year quite significantly. 
um, and great. So again, that's a that's a just a, a nice, um, as I said, way to test the um, temperature. So um, you might have to close that window on some versions of Zoom. It doesn't close it for you. Um, and whilst some people might think that's preferable um, to looking at me, um, I would argue um, probably you'll have a better experience if you close the window. Uh, so let's get going. Um, many people may or may not know um, that in around um, the tail end of 2020, uh, we had about 15, 16 people interviewed um, on um, uh, by, by Dave Harry's for podcasts on understanding um, their um, their routes to personal resilience. And if you if you reflect back on the time, uh, it was kind of uh, five or six months into uh, COVID when we first started asking these questions. People have been through quite a lot, uh, and people had to dig deep into their into their personal resilience to continue their. Um, their, their, their sustainable um, approach to business. So um, they're, they're really interesting podcasts. I listened to a couple of them yesterday um, and it's really, it's a moment in time, really, really good to reflect on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to, um, to Matt um, Wheeler, who's going to just give us some sort of high level summaries of some of the things that were talked about at that time. Morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So, um, as as Chris said, the um, the, the resilient leader podcast uh, was uh, was conducted uh, at the back end of uh, of twenty twenty, and uh, that's still available to, to download now. Um, you can um, check it out on all uh, good podcast providers. Um, there were sixteen episodes, I think. Um, um, I've seen. I think I've seen Richard Clark appearing on on today's. Uh, uh, today's attendee list, and uh, he he took part in that. So hopefully he'll testify that uh, actually it was a you know re really good uh, really good experience to to go through. And um, I think as part of today's topic, it's um, it's useful just to reflect on some of the uh, some of the, the key sort of points that that people made, just to uh, get us thinking about motivation and resilience and sort of what it means to each of us as as leaders and and how different people deal with the challenges of of being a leader. So. Um, let's just kind of rattle through a quick, uh, a quick few of those, um, and I think you know to start off with, um, you know, Lisa Zevi summed it up um, at the very beginning when uh, when we were doing the the, the forums. Um, you know, it uh, it was very very tough times. You know, we were all facing sort of pretty major major challenges and uncertainty about what uh, what the future looked like for us. And uh, I think uh, one of the common threads through the whole thing was that by coming together in this kind of environment, it made uh, all the leaders that we were talking to feel that they're not actually alone and uh, that you know, everybody is facing similar challenges. And uh, you know, by sharing those challenges and, uh, and those thoughts that we all have, it, uh, it helped everybody no end. So um, going into a little bit of uh, a bit, bit of detail, um, Doug Elliott was one of the guys that, uh, that did the, uh, the podcast and he was very much focused on his own core beliefs and uh, you know making sure that he led by example and uh, and really sort of focused on the the beliefs that he had personally which then resonated out without his team and you know the quote from him is it that it's easy to be a leader when it, when it's easy but when it's difficult you have to rely on what's really important to you and then you know moving on to uh, elaine lewis who uh, um you know is, is really majorly focused on consistency and you know reflecting on how her team see her and she's you know got to be consistent with her team and uh, and sort of kind of being that uh, um, that person who's on the even keel every day and uh, you know the, the person that the, the team can rely upon. Uh, so that's very important. Frank Negriello, um, he's a, a, a senior communications guy at Unipart and uh, um, he's obviously very much uh, focused on the communication um, and empathy and understanding how people feel. So, you know, being a, a good communicator and, and being resilient in the face of, uh, of challenges and how you communicate that is, is you know, very, uh, very, very important to him. Uh, Lisa Zevi again, um, interesting sort of take on it actually that uh, she sees resilience as an antidote to uncertainty. So at that time we were all going through uncertain periods and you know, didn't know what the, the future future held, but by being resilient, you can kind of take that uncertainty away. You can you can kind of create a bit of predictability and a bit of process and, and sort of rhythm into into what you're doing on a daily basis. So uh, kind of calm things down. Um, and then uh, 
we uh, we go across to the to the US. Um, our our friend over there, Miles McNamee, um, he referenced Rocky Balboa, um, and uh, um, you know really sort of focused on uh, uh, not uh, not focusing on how hard you can hit; it's how hard you can get hit, but get up and keep moving forward. So you know that's uh, you know that's very visual, and uh, you can clearly see here see where his mind was going with that one. Um, and I think finally, um, Paul Feeden, who runs a, a, a big PR agency, I think uh, uh, Paul spoke on the forums recently, actually. And, uh, you know, he's had a, a very long career and he's you know, developed uh, lots of experiences and battle scars along the way. And, you know, his um, approach to resilience is basically learning from those scars and learning from those experiences and, and really using them to, uh, to good effect um, moving forward. So, um, that's just a, a few of the snippets from from the the podcast series, and uh, you know we wanted to just kind of um, introduce today's topic a little bit with those because uh, um, you know what we're going to do today is we want to try and make you guys work a little bit as well. So um, before I hand back to Chris, um, I wanted to uh, get you thinking about your own personal motivation mantras, and uh, you know what we're going to do um, at the end of of today's uh, session is. Uh, as Chris said, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, sort of run through some of the, the mantras that are, are coming through from the group and we'll, we'll choose our favourites. So what we'd like you to do over the course of uh, today's forum is just think about the mantras that you use, how you um, focus on your own resilience and motivation and uh, um, put them in the chat and uh, share them with everybody we'll collate them and uh, we'll put them into a poll at the end and uh, and we can uh, we can share and discuss them and uh, and decide which ones we, we like the best so um don't be shy just um fire them fire them in um they can be as as uh, flippant or as uh, serious as you like and uh, and we'll, we'll see where we go from from there so we'll keep reminding you over the course of uh, today's session but uh before we do that, I would like to just hand back to Chris, who's going to give you, uh, um, you know, uh, sort of motivation and resilience from his own perspective and, uh, and a number of uh, tips as well. So, uh, um, Chris, if you're ready, we can uh, kick off with uh, with your own thoughts. Thanks very much, Matt. And, and I have to say they, they're, they're really inspiring, those podcasts. It's well worth a listen. Um, so um, if, you, if, you, if you're um, increasingly traveling in the car or, or just about or out running, um, uh, give them a listen. They're, they're, they're really good things to do. So funny story. Um, when we were preparing for this forum uh, and thinking about the topic, um, uh, we said that I should do a, I should do a slot on uh, sort of resilience tips um, from my own point of view. And uh, Matt said to me, uh, you do a lot worse than listen to your own podcast and just uh, just tell some of the things that were in that podcast. And I thought that's a good idea. Um, so having not listened to it for some time, I listened to it um, a couple of days ago. Uh, and as I started listening to it, I the, the language in it was basically, um, this podcast came um, out of a forum that we ran in September, 2020. And as I was, as I was listening to that, I was thinking, Ah, I wonder whether I wrote any slides for that forum. Uh, that would save me a job. Uh, so indeed, I did. Uh, so what I'm going to do, um, which is really interesting, I'm going to talk through the same slides that I talked through in September 2020. So I don't think too many of the people um, here today were here then, which again is a really interesting thing about these forums. There's a constantly moving audience. Um, but even if you were, I think there's some really great stuff in here. And I also think it's really interesting um, to look at these um, through today's eyes, because one of the points I made in my podcast was I, I actually thought that um, uh, the people that fared best in the early stages of the um, COVID pandemic were people who were just, I guess, had naturally had a resilience um, toolkit that they developed over years, the kind of the Paul Feeden point, actually, um, that um, battle scars from doing things over many years um, does tend to um, prepare you well for that constant uncertainty that uh, running a business and navigating business life is. So um, what I'll do is I will fly through these 12, um, just one by one, a little bit of commentary around each one. Uh, and I just think they're all interesting points. So the first one is is all about perspective, actually. Um, and I just so I mean, these are personal, um, but I, I, I always whenever I think things are going a bit badly or a bit rough, I always just like contextualize my life um against against those of others so this is the kind of like an example the nelson mandela 
examples. I'm, I'm, I'm not in a cell for 27 years. I'm, I'm not, I'm not kind of doing hard labor. I'm not sweeping streets. I'm not in the trenches. I'm not, um, I'm not kind of trying to cross Europe to gain asylum. I'm just running a business and, and trying to make the best, the, the best job of it. So I think there's, there's like, just like keeping things in perspective is, is a really, is a really good, good place to start. Second one, um, this, um, I put this image on LinkedIn last night, actually. Um, so this, this kind of, um, this story starts from, uh, as a, a trumpet player, um, I remember being, being in an orchestra once with, um, there was a guest conductor there and we had a concert coming up on the Saturday. Um, and, uh, the parking arrangements for the venue were pretty rubbish. Um, and one of the double bass players started complaining about the fact that the, you know, he's going to have to carry his massive double bass, uh, halfway across, I think it was Bristol or something, um, to which the, the conductor said, well, you chose the instrument, you could have picked the flute. Um, and the point there being, obviously we've chosen a path, we've chosen a path. Um, and actually, um, the, we, we choose paths often because uh, rewards uh, rewards that are, are kind of offset against risks, and I think um, therefore you, you kind of have to you have to accept that you you've made a choice, uh, and if 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 um, you feel it's not the right thing for you to be doing, there are always other options um, that that you can explore. So that's the second point. You chose the instrument. Uh, understanding the um, success iceberg. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this here for people who don't know. Uh, this is uh, the uh, internationally famous um, violinist um, uh, Nicola Benedetti, all glammed up, um, hugely um, successful, absolute top tier international soloists, uh, running her own foundation, inspiring a whole um, generation of uh, sort of uh, uh, children from all kinds of backgrounds, really, really interesting uh, person. So there she is. Um, this uh, next uh, picture here, this is also Nicola Benedetti there, kind of looking hugely stressed, uh, massive gouges in her neck where constant practice uh, kind of uh, just beats her body up constantly. Um, and I think um, kind of th this, this is the thing, this is the success iceberg, the things that people don't see, the years of hard work, the struggle uh, that takes you there. And if we just move on to the next slide, uh, this image of which there, there's many versions of this, um, but like, I guess success um, is, is, is potentially the things that people see, but all the things underneath uh, hard work, persistent, late nights, sacrifices, criticism, doubts, failure risks, um, often just kind of um, don't, don't necessarily get appreciated or seen. So, but it kind of goes with the territory, I guess. And, uh, uh, as I said, like, I guess in very literal, uh, you chose the instrument in Nicola Benedetti's case. Um, so next, uh, decide what you judge your success by. So I wrote, uh, the thing on this slide, I wrote that as it says there in 2003, I did a, an exercise in trying to work out, uh, what was important to me. Uh, and I still live by this today. So everything else that goes on in my world, I kind of, um, I, I put in the perspective of this. So I, I judge my personal success by. Uh, how happy my house is uh, and how easily my children talk to me, which given my uh, my children are now 18 and 21, uh, has its moments. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, uh, this all goes very well for me. And I think this is what's important ultimately. So uh, it's simple, it's constant and it's uncomplicated. So next one, uh, this is a book I read many, 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 many years ago. In fact, it's probably behind you somewhere. Um, and, uh, I think some people have read this, but even if you don't read it, the, the, the title is, is the significant point. So, uh, uh, by a chap called Richard Carson, don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. And in reality, it probably is. And kind of the second bullet there, um, nothing you are stressing about today will really matter in six months time. Probably true. And actually rarely matters in two weeks time. Probably true. If you remember what you were, if you can remember what you was stressing you out, I know stuff, stuff stressing me out today. I've got uh, two meetings later today, which I'm not yet fully prepared for. And that's stressing me out. I know that in two weeks time, I won't even remember that. Um, and uh, even on the day you die, there will still be stuff in your inbox. And I can 100% guarantee you if today is the day I die, that is very, 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 very true. Uh, so don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, next one, other, and uh, this came out a lot in, in the original work we do. 
people have got books they read that make big impressions on them. So don't sweat the small stuff. This one, uh, Covey, I read the, the Stephen Covey book kind of 20 odd years ago. And I, I would still go as far as to say that I pretty well live this every day. So these seven habits, whether you uh, go to the trouble of reading the whole book or um, just read a synopsis somewhere, you can't, you can't go far wrong with these. So always being proactive, always uh, keeping your eye on the bigger picture, uh, putting first things first. So taking the time to do the things that are going to make a real difference, seeking first to understand, empathizing, putting yourselves in the shoes of the people you are dealing with, thinking win-win. So always trying to find a way that um, works well for all parties. Synergize, so bring things together so they work well. Uh, and sharpen the saw, which basically means don't let yourselves go stale. Like keep your eye on things, always be constantly improving. You you can't go wrong with this stuff. Um, and for me, it, if, I, if I live that, it just keeps me uh, grounded. Um, understanding switching on and switching off. So again, these are things that came out in, in the first round of, the, of these conversations that we had. Um, so uh, like having little personal rules. Um, and um, so these are just some examples. But for me, the switching on, switching off thing, I, won't, I, I, I said this last time, I won't look at my phone um, until I've had my first cup of tea of the day. It's just a rule. Uh, and I, sometimes I make that cup of tea very slow. Sometimes I make that cup of tea quite quick. Um, I switch stuff off. So like if I if I'm if I'm like in the weekend or my holiday, I will turn stuff off so I just can't get to it. Um, and like even if you end the day physically turning stuff off is just really good way of just separating things, keeping perspective. Uh, and that's an extension really in the next one, uh, which is just having a bunch of a bunch of personal rules. So this is kind of this is a a, a bunch of things that. Um, I, I update this and work around this is just a simple list uh, uh, and lots of them are simple cliche so wash up as you go along that doesn't just mean doing the washing up it means generally everything you do don't leave it till later it just becomes a big mess um, give more than you get all those kind of things very consistent um, no work emails before seven or after seven generally those things it's kind of just um, just try and have a set of personal rules and, and check yourself uh, next one is um, genuinely put first things first. So this is just a, a lot of people um, uh, try these kind of principles. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I, I literally program first things first sessions in my diary. Uh, and I say, I'm just doing it. I'm doing it. I'm going to focus on the things that are going to take me forward uh, and take the business forward. And I, I so on, on the basis... Uh, that these slides here are from September 2020. Uh, you can see the date there. Uh, uh, an interesting point, which I'll come to in a second, actually. Uh, everything is ephemeral. If I look what was in my diary in 2020, uh, some of it is still the same, uh, but some of it is very different. Uh, but I still, I still do this today. I've done this kind of principle for years. Uh, number 10, a good reminder for everybody, uh, because we want to see mantras, and there are definitely mantras coming through. Uh, but get them in the chat. Um, have some mantras um, that you, that inspire you. So um, here's a bunch here. So um, like life is what happens to you whilst you're busy making plans. So that's a kind of don't be, don't over plan. Get on. Do. Uh, I love the um, the only way to predict the future is to create it. That is one of my personal favourites. Like again, it's be proactive. Um, uh, if you want to get somewhere, start walking. Stephen Pope will have put that in the chat. I know that's uh, he and I worked together like 20 odd years, 25 years ago. And like I know we've both lived that ever since. So if you want to get somewhere, start walking. Uh, never do any business talking to ourselves. Things don't get done if people don't sew them uh, or even do them. Uh, autocorrect doesn't always work. Uh, and everything is about pipeline. Like we, we're a sales led business. It's all about pipe. So just like live these things and you'll really find that you... Uh, um you you make you make progress so please do put yours in the chat uh last couple um have a passion um so um i i, I use this example regularly uh the the queen and margaret thatcher two uh very similarly aged uh well not so much now uh but two very similarly aged women in um in significant positions of uh, leadership and power um and the difference between the two people was the queen um her passion is horses 
uh, that's what really inspires her, really keeps her fresh and motivated uh, and, and, and to this day kind of excites her. Uh, Margaret Thatcher, her passion was politics, her job, uh, and that was it. And she was she was fundamentally one dimensional, which meant when it finished, um, she was like she was without purpose, actually. So like having a passion is a, 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 an absolutely critical thing. And um, lots of people know I'm massively into uh, my uh, trumpet playing. Uh, and, and for me, and I've talked to lots of people about these kind of things. Uh, the reason I find that so inspiring is a it's really hard. Uh, and B, you can't do anything but be 100% focused in it. Um, and you meet great people from all kinds of walks of life. And it's just really, uh, really exciting. So like, it was difficult during lockdown. I know lots of people's passions got absolutely lopped off, um, but they're coming back now. And I just encourage people just to like get that uh, sort of exterior immersion. It keeps you interesting. It sharpens the saw. Um, and then the very last one is um, if you've done any work with Firestarter, over the years, you'll know we're big into kind of control documents. So trying to avoid doing work again and again and again, like getting yourself to a point where you create some kind of doc, doesn't have to be a big doc, can be one page or whatever, that says, this is what I stand for, this is how I am. If you read the Covey book, it talks about like literally writing a personal aspiration statement or something like that. But those kind of things which you give yourself the opportunity to revisit on a regular basis, some kind of control document, um, I think really helps just keep you grounded and amongst all the chaos that's going on, uh, just allows you to um, keep a bit of shape around your life. So um, those are my 12. Um, and as I look at them kind of unchanged from 18 months ago and probably unchanged from 20 years ago, um, but really, um, really, really strong. And just the bottom point there, kind of this, this um, overall principle of being kind of proactive about being the best possible version of yourself. Um, like Doug, Doug Elliott said um, in, in that very first quote that Matt showed, uh, if you're true to your core values, um, it really does um, support your overall um, resilience. So now it is your turn. Um, and what we're going to do is go into the breakout groups. Um, so uh, uh, most people have done these before. They're really straightforward. We will put you into a group for 20 minutes. Um, you should find that there is a fire starter facilitator in there. We always say, please don't spend 18 of the 20 minutes introducing yourselves. Um, uh, a quick hello, a quick context, but uh, then if we can get on with the topic, that would be great. There is a countdown timer in the um, in the in the room, uh, so to speak, on your screen. So just keep an eye on that. The facilitators will do that as well. Um, the topic that we want you to do, um, as well as please, if you haven't yet put your mantras in, I can see there's lots coming through. Uh, do do take a second to do that. Um, put your mantras in the chat. But we would just like you to have this same kind of conversation. Talk about your own tips and motivation, resilience. Maybe look at it a bit in the context of where we are now compared to where we were. Um, 18 months ago. So what's changed? Um, but fundamentally, how are you going to make sure that you give yourself the best possible chances of success in 2022 by drawing on your own uh, resilience toolkit? Um, what we're going to do after is we're going to have a bit of a panel session. Um, so we're going to invite one person from each breakout group um, to uh, join a panel which Dave Harries um, will host. Um, so please can I ask that um, pretty well the first thing you do when you land in your breakout group is agree who would like to be on the panel. Uh, and if uh, if the Fast Starter facilitator could communicate that to Matt Wheeler um, and possibly Stephen Pope as well, that would be helpful. Um, so, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with you to get to that anyway. So yes, enjoy the breakout and we will see you in about 20 minutes. Hi everybody. Welcome back. Um, I hope you had some really good conversations and we'll find out a little bit, um, in a moment, the kind of things you were talking about, um, as, um, as mentioned, our idea is that. Um, we're going to host a bit of a panel discussion uh, where Dave Harry's um, uh, and a representative from each of the breakouts just spends 10-15 uh, minutes just talking about some of the things that were shared and uh, and some of the topics that come out of that. Um, so um, before that, though, I'm just going to give you a little bit inf of information about a government scheme 
uh, which has been launched, which you may um, or may not know about. Um, this program uh, called um, Help to Grow um, is um, exactly as it says on, on, on this slide. It's a government backed management course um, offering 12 weeks of learning. So there are um, 12 um, two hour modules. And if my memory serves me right, um, seven of them are um, uh, uh, online and five of them are face to face. They're being held at um, accredited um, business uh, schools and universities um, across um, the whole of the UK uh, and covering literally ev all, all the topics you would reasonably expect um, to, to need uh, in terms of uh, a fundamental business management. So everything from uh, marketing to team management to business planning to uh, internationalization to uh, digital approaches so really good courses if you if you google help to grow um you'll you'll find yourself on their on their on the government website and it, and it gives you details of the 12 modules um as it happens um um so they, they are cohorts of 20 20 to 25 so uh, good sized groups so also a very good uh, networking opportunity and as, as, as well as the courses themselves um you also get some one-to-one -one, um business mentoring so a really um a really good program uh and backed by the government so even though it is um a a, a course worth seven and a half thousand pounds um it's 90 percent funded by the government meaning that the individual business only pays 750 pounds um so we fast starter are involved with this um we are running uh cohorts um uh in both Gloucestershire and also um, down in Plymouth as well. Um, and their first cohort courts are starting in February, although they're expecting to run somewhere in the region of 10 cohorts a year um, for the next um, three years. So we just thought we would get this out there. Um, there's like, it, it, it's really good. It's a really good program, uh, government backed program. Uh, if you're interested, it I would argue it's a great way to to get uh, uh, effect, what is effectively a, a proper university course um, in, in business management um, for a very small amount of uh, relative uh, money. So it's out there. Um, we'll send some more details out as well, but literally you can just um, go online and uh, search Help to Grow and you'll find all the information about it. Um, anybody who wants information about the Gloucestershire ones and the Plymouth ones, um, please feel free to contact us at Fast Starter and we will um, give you whatever insight we can. Um, so that's helped to grow. Um, so now, without um, further ado, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over um, to Mr. Dave Harries um, and uh, his merry band of uh, breakout room representatives. Um, and we look forward to finding out what has been talked about. So over to you, Dave. Thank you, Chris, and uh, welcome to the uh, merry band, as Chris described you, of breakout room representatives. Um, obviously, I um, had no advance warning uh, of who you were going to be, so uh, forgive me. Uh, I obviously don't know you all. I do actually do know Paul because Paul and I have uh, worked together in the past. But um, could I also remind you all four of you to unmute yourselves uh, before you speak? That would be really good. Um, so first of all, um, Sophie, can I come to you first as you're on the top left of my screen? So um, right. tell me, tell me the sort of, give me a bit of a summary of what was discussed in your room and, and the sort of things you got from it. Okay, uh, well, it was Roger, Jack, Matt and myself, and we had a really rich discussion around, I think a, a few of us take quite slightly different approaches, but a, it was a really rich discussion so lots of points around just get started you know stop doing the thinking and just get started things get easier um lots of discussion around bringing people with you and also recognizing other people's competence don't be scared of making mistakes um a great point from roger about working where you have teams i'm a solo person but where you have teams giving everyone the equal time and that includes equal time to speak uh a big thing around recognizing competence so you know actually enable and support people to get out there and have those conversations 
do one thing that scares you every day. Uh, my approach in terms of forward thinking tends to be kind of focus on the process. Usually I have a kind of imagery, a very fuzzy image of what the outcome will be. And it could be something quite random, a little bit unrelated, but that's, that's what works for me. And I think that was most of it. And yeah, do one thing that scares you every day. Any, any sort of pithy uh, mantras that anybody suggested, you know, that, that struck a chord with you? I know they don't always with these mantras, but anything sort of <laughs> make, make you think, oh, yeah, that's really good. There's, there's some real wisdom in that. And you're I allowed think to say the, no. the do one thing that scares you every day. <laughs> particularly as a yeah. solo operator because it's all quite yeah, scary. Well, I think we're all, we're all doing that right now, aren't we? Yeah. So uh, that's great. Thank you very much, Sophie. Um, Jane, um, if I could come to you next, give me a bit of a summary of what was discussed in your room. Hi, uh, so I had Richard, Brian and Adrian in, in my room and we talked a lot about uh, team happiness and um, psychological support of the team and um, trying to head things off um, early before um, you know they become big issues and if if things if uh, pers you know, persons in, in your business are, are really struggling is to sort of really focus on helping them and getting them through that rather than letting it fester and carry on so it's um, the, the challenge of, of uh, jumping on things to um, keep staff happy, uh, keeping uh, so you have a, a low staff turnover and happy people uh, work well and, uh, and more, more creative. We also talked that two of us are in the creative industry and the issue we've had uh, is um, how to start, starting with that white piece of paper and trying to come up with an idea. And that has been so hard when you haven't had that informal sort of mentoring and people commenting on what you're doing and having to be very uh, proactive about how you brief those people um, and um, helping them to go through that creative process because it can be a very lonely place when you're trying to start to think of an idea for a, for a project so that support uh, workshopping things through has been is, is, is very important one day at a time just get on with it, get things sorted and don't worry about what's happening tomorrow. Starting is the hardest part. So it's that support, celebrating completions and celebrating even the, the smallest of successes and start with the celebratory things and the good things when you're all getting together. And then the harder problems, discuss those um, afterwards, but always focusing on the good things first and not just diving into the, the problems which we all tend to do when we get together to uh, for briefings and to debrief. Um, so start with the good things before you get to the, the harsher things. And my personal yeah. mantra is uh, don't wish for it, work for it. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. I like that. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm writing all these down. I'm going to use lots of these. Uh, that was great. Thank you, Jane. Uh, some really interesting stuff there. Um, Moaz, could I come to you next? I'm sorry, I'm probably pronouncing your name wrongly. <laughs> Forgive me if I am. Um, but could you tell us what what, what was uh, what was discussed in your room? Yep. Good morning. Uh, you're close. Don't worry about it. It's Moaz. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah. So, um, in, in terms of the sort of general discussion, there was there was I suppose two thoughts that came out. One um was a more of a um in terms of your own resilience and getting up and getting things done um in particular where life can throw lots of things at you uh what is it you're gonna do um uh, in amongst that and and actually make things happen uh yourself um and there were sort of the thoughts that um we had um uh uh, Craig and um, Jeff in the room with Rebecca. Um, we discussed around structures um, where one, um, uh, Craig was talking about he has a structure in his day, uh, you know, he has a sort of 10 hour day that he does, what time he gets up and, but then, you know, when his time is finished, he, that's it, he's, you know, things are down, he doesn't do any, any other work uh, and he gets on with, with relaxing and, um, 
being a little bit more uh, chilled out from having to do the day's work. Whereas um, the other discussion was actually uh, having that flexibility of, do you know what, I can work a little bit later in the day if I wanted to, if I wanted to do something else at some other point, um, or work a little bit on a weekend by having a weekday off potentially. And I think it's what works for you and understanding yourself, your surroundings, um, home life is like, etc. that you can um, uh, make that how you want to operate and work uh, actually happen is becomes really important. Um, yeah. The other bits we we sort of talked about in terms of my own personal experience, you know, what my uh, what my dad told me is JFDI. Just go and um, won't use the swear word part of it. Do it. Um, <laughs> and the other part is you will always get knocked down. Life will throw things at you that um, whether they uh, knock you down, you trip up, and you fall uh, flat on your face. Whether it's a small fall or whether it's a big fall. Um, what makes a difference is dusting yourself and standing back up again and taking your next step forward um, and don't let whatever makes you fall down uh, keep you down there. Um, so that was sort of uh, the general discussion that we, we yeah, had. Brilliant, Moise, that's, that's fantastic. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm going to move on to Paul because I'm conscious that we're going to run out of time if I'm not careful. I'll get into trouble if that happens. So, Paul, um, give us a, I, I was in your room, so obviously I know a little bit about what we discussed, but, but uh, if you could summarise uh, for me what, what sort of points came out of there. Yeah, yeah, we had good discussions. So There's myself, Daniela, John and, and yourself, Dave. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we started off certainly, to, well, I mean, we, the, the conversation was certainly about the mantras. Um, you know, I think we shared some mantras that we liked and Daniela um, suggested a really good one that she wrote in the chat. Um, you didn't come this far just to get this far. Um, so really positive in terms of the outlook. Um, you know, John um, likes the Henry Ford one. Um, we're not, I'm not going to say it exactly right, but whether you think you can or you can't, you're probably probably right, um, which, which is very true. Um, you know, I wrote in the chat, tomorrow is a new day. So I kind of, you know, I think we had conversation. I wanted to drive a bit of conversation around, um, you know, the, the, the sort of the changing times that we, I guess we've all been working through over the last sort of 18 months, two years through, through, through the pandemic. Um, you know, the fact that I think a lot of us have had to be very flexible, you know, working remotely, working with different types of challenges. You know, I, I kind of said this time last year, uh, it was a quite a difficult time in the business that I work for. Um, I had some increased responsibility at the time. Um, you know, we were kind of in lockdown last January. We were struggling with Brexit um, issues. We had stock stuck in ports and things like that. And it was, you know, I was working with a team that, where we were having stressful days. And I think, you know, I, I, I wrote in the chat, tomorrow is a new day because, you know, my focus back then and, and still is and for a long time has been, well, it, you know, you're going to have a tough day. You're going to have a stressful day. Um, you know, but, but, you know, put, put it to one side at the end of the day, focus on the, on, on the following day. And I, I kind of said, you know, that whole thing of sometimes I write down my priorities for the next day at the end of the day. Um, so I can kind of switch off mentally and enjoy the evening or, you know, I do it kind of first thing in the morning the, the, the following day to kind of set out the, the, the day positively, a bit like Chris says about, you know, not necessarily going on screens, you know, having your first coffee or tea at the start of the day and having some sort of reflection time. Um, so, um, oh, I didn't just dip out, did I? I think my phone rang. I might have no, no, it's out. Just, just your, just your uh, picture, Paul, it's fine. Oh, I just dipped out, okay, yeah. Um, so no, and I think, you know, I think Dave made a really good point just, just to sort of close it out. I think you, you, you said, Dave, at the start, that, you know, you've always, I guess, felt cynical when it comes to some of those kind of quotes, some of those mantras. And I think your point was a really good one. And, and I was thinking that as well, because, you know, we are, we do live in a society now, I think with social media, there's lots of access to these kinds of mantras, which is really positive. Um, sometimes there could almost be too many, but I think it's the, 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 the key thing is to, I guess, you know, like Chris kind of picked up right at the start of this forum, that you choose the ones that are going to work for you. And the, the key thing is to, to choose a mantra or mantras that you can actually live and breathe and actually get that they're actually going to make a difference to you or people you work with or, or, or friends and, and, and family. So um, I think that's really important. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Paul. And, and, and I think the, the point that came out of our discussion was that, you know, they have to they have to chime with you. They have to, you know, switch a switch in your head and you think, oh, yeah, actually, that is a useful mantra. That is something I can live by. And, and if they don't, then you should probably ignore them. But um, 
thank you all four of you. I'm just I'm going to bring uh, Chris and Matt into the discussion now as well um, to get their sort of perspective on this. Um, and uh, Chris, did you, I mean obviously you gave us that very interesting talk earlier on um, from you know all your, the way you motivate yourself and all the the, the points that you use. Have you learned anything from what our contributors are telling us now? Have some of those things sort of chimed with you? Have you thought, oh, that's a uh, good one? I feel like I've just done an hour of yoga. I feel that relaxed now. Um, <laughs> after everybody, <laughs> which if anybody has ever seen me do yoga, trust me, that's not a pretty sight. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, uh, as, as Paul was talking, um, and Moyes for that matter, kind of, and, and well, everybody actually, uh, just kind of the, like you can only do so much in a day, can't you? Like you, you, you just have to kind of be. Uh, I mean, uh, the the slightly crude version, uh, which I, I won't repeat in this forum. Like I, I, I regularly, definitely on a Friday, find myself getting to a point where last enough, forget it. Yeah, uh, uh, move on. Like tomorrow is another day. Next week's another week. It'll all be fine. Yeah, uh, and I think that's. I think yeah. It, I mean, it's it's it's. I guess the general point is. Um, I, I hope I hope that everybody has found this cathartic as well, this experience, and just listening and maybe just taking a pause and thinking, actually, you know what? As a bunch of people, we're pretty good at this, yeah. Um, and that that's really what resilience is about, isn't it? It's trust trusting yourself, trusting yourself to yeah. to know that you you can do this, yeah. Well, let's find, let's find out from Matt, uh, who has to work with you, whether how he uh, gets motivated. And, uh, you know, Matt, I mean, you know, it's, it's constant, not, constant I, I, job I, I, boards, I, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My motivation is is never, never uh, being in a room with Chris when he's doing uh, doing yoga. That would be bad. The the um, one of the points that really does resonate with me is that the whole kind of don't sweat the small stuff thing. I think um, you know, as as we've said, we we all have to deal with problems, and when when those problems are right in front of you, they they seem as big as you like, and uh, you kind of wonder how on earth you're going to deal with them. But uh, you know, the problem that you have today that is huge tomorrow will be a bit smaller, the day after will be a bit smaller than that, and a, and a week later it will probably have gone away, and you know, the way that we deal with those problems is what makes us leaders. And, you know, we talked in our group about just taking small steps, getting started, um, uh, addressing things in certain ways, and, and we all find a way through things. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what it takes to, uh, to be successful, ultimately, it's, it's how you deal with yeah. those, those challenges. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a really. And then, good as Chris said as well, put things in perspective. You know, we, we don't have bad lives, so it's no. it's not all yeah, bad. No, I think perspective is a hugely important thing, and and I, I absolutely the uh, your very first slide, Chris, made that very clear with uh, Nelson Mandela and all that sort of thing. So thank you all very much. I, I was hoping to come back to you and get a few more comments, but I think we're I think we're sort of over our time now. So. Uh, um, but it was really interesting talking to all of you. Thank you for volunteering to come on and uh, and uh, be in this discussion. So I'll hand you back to Chris now, who's going to see us out to the end of the forum. Thanks very much. Yes, thanks everybody. That that, that that's really great. Really, really, just a, a, a nice a nice um, few moments of our life. Um, so uh, the, I think pretty well the final thing we're going to do just before we have a mini wrap up is do a potentially uh, completely unsatisfactory poll, which may or may not work because we've tried to do a live poll. I, I don't think we've ever tried to do a live. It's worked. Come on. It's worked. Brilliant. OK, so uh, this is our second try at getting this to work. Uh, so uh, all we've done is uh, we've picked some of those mantras. We couldn't put them all in because it would just uh, it would, the list would have just been too long. But just we thought for a bit of fun, uh, up on your screen now, you should see, I think uh, we put 10 in um, and yeah, just have a little go through these and uh, hopefully you can uh, see these. Um, can you see them? Thumbs up. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. And you might need to scroll to see the ones down the bottom because uh, all 10 don't fit on the um, on the slide. But perfect. Excellent. You can see them. So just. Uh, have a little, just pick pick three, if you if you can stop at three. Um, if you've already picked more than three, don't pick all 10. I mean, that would make it a very dull poll. Um, so just, um, just far away, we'll give it a bit of time and we'll just see. 
um we'll just see uh which ones uh tickle people's fancy yeah um i did like the uh do something do one thing every day that scares you yeah um cool we've got a couple more people just to um put their thoughts in and then we'll just uh yeah we'll wrap it we'll wrap it there i think just because of time so um our we'll do our top um um top three uh ones which is gonna require me to um do this live so 60 percent 47 40 so uh in first place um so terrible i should have gone third place first i'm going to go third place first in third place uh whether you think you can or you can't you are right uh in second place uh don't wait for perfect get started by trying uh and uh right at the top of the show uh is um if you want to get somewhere start walking uh which i can't remember which book that's from but it's from a book that's on this shelf somewhere um and i should get horribly distracted for the rest of the day trying to find it um but excellent i think um that probably brings us to a natural end um thank you so much um for your participation today in terms of these forums as i said at the beginning uh, we've done 23 now we keep on going um i think the you know the, the guiding principles right from the beginning where all we're trying to do is just get like-minded people together uh, for a bit of time out some interesting conversations some uh, in inspirational speakers periodically good topics to talk about we continue to do that but um please do help us out by giving us ideas thoughts things you'd like to talk about what topics you would think would be really great to cover in these forums it really helps us if people give us ideas um and it can be anything it can be a difficult topic it can be a fun topic it can be a training topic whatever just please fire them at us um it really helps so um as always i'd like to thank uh, matt wheeler um dave harry's um uh, the production team stephen and paddy um all the fire starter gang behind the scenes that work so hard to make these things possible and of course uh, last but not least everybody that participated and came today um as they say without you there wouldn't be us um so please uh, please keep coming so thank you very much uh, have a great day i'm off to start walking so see you soon bye thanks guys